guys, uh, welcome. Um, just want to show you a quick tip that I love to use in terms of really grasping and getting a whole lot of color in the foreground and really trying to separate the colors and really get the most of your impact in terms of the foreground flowers. Um, this is an image from Mount Rainier and I loved all the variety of different colors here. But what I needed to do is find a way to really add colors but not globally add colors all at one time. So in this situation, what I want to do is I want to use what's called the radio filter or basically use a local adjustment and I use it in conjunction with what's called a range mask. So if you go up to here and we click on this little circle up on the right here, it's called a radio filter or you can use the keyboard shortcut J. And in this search circumstance is I'm going to draw a circle around everything that I want in terms to add color to. So here we are drawing a circle all around the lupin the purple colors in the foreground here. Now you can see what you're doing here by just clicking the mask options and you can see everything that's white is going to be affected here. So if we just hide that for a second and I add some saturation everything in that mask as you can see has now had saturation added. You can also turn off the overlay and you see nothing, but I like to keep the overlay and it shows me what's going on. The other thing you can do is invert it and everything on the outside now will be saturated. But for me, I like to keep it everything within the circle. So here we are. We made a circle. All the colors have been saturated. And that's not what I want. I want to be able to add colors separately. And in this circumstances, I want to just add saturation to the purple lupin in the foreground. So how do I do that? Well, I use what's called the radio filter in conjunction with the range mask. If you go down here below, and you'll see an option that says range mask, and when you use the radio filter, or you use the adjustment brush, or the gradient filter, you get the option to use a range mask. And in this situation, they're like a luminosity mask in the sense that I can either target a color or a luminance. So if I'm trying to target just the lupin, I'm going to use color because I just want to target that lupin. So if I click on color, I then get what's called a sample color brush. I could then double click on the purple that I'm trying to get and everything else will disappear. So if you watch here, all the color is now just being affected in the lupin. So unsaturated, saturated. And so I like to add a little bit of saturation. That's what I love to do is add just color but the thing I really like now is there's a new addition to the color Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom in that there's an addition to actually change that hue as well. So not only am I targeting just the lupin and its saturation, but now I can change the hue. So this can come in in many forms, but in this situation you can see now we can change the color of the lupin quite drastically. So in this situation I wanted a slightly purple. So I'm liking right about there. And when you get to where you want to be, but you're almost there, but not quite, you can click on this button here. It's called Use Fine Adjustment, or hold down the option for a Mac or Alt for Windows, all right? And then what you do is you get smaller increment changes, and you can really fine tune the kind of changes you want. And so that's kind of like where I want my looping. So I draw back out. I like everything that's going on here, but I can see that my green grass is sort of dull and I kind of want to give it more of a punch. So how am I going to do that? How am I going to target just the greens? Well, we're going to go back and do the same thing again. So we can click the word J and it starts again. Or we radio filter, draw a circle around the green grass that I want to change. All right, let's add saturation. Now everything in the circle is going to be saturated all over again. We know that, right? But what do we do? We change just the colors of the green by changing the range mask on color. So I go here, double click on the green, and now everything the green, we watch here, see? Green is now only being doing, is adding that punch. The other thing we can do, again, is change the hue. So I want my grass to be a little bit more greener, right? So maybe that, and then maybe I can reduce this the saturation. Now I've got a nice little punch to that green that I'm liking. It's a lot better than it was before. So there we are. So I've added some nice color to the lupin. I've added some punch to the green. But now when I've added this color, I can see that my my yellows are sort of really lacking. So what do we do? We draw another circle. We go up to here or we just click J. 
And what do I do? Draw a circle around all the yellows. This time, what I'm going to do is go straight to the range mask color, click the sample tool, and then just click right this. And now when I click this, just watch this, just the yellows are going up center. And so I like the saturation. And again, you can change the set a little bit if you want more yellow, more green. So that's a great way to really capture some color separation. The one thing I got left here is the reds. So the Indian paintbrush here, the magenta uh, paintbrush could add a little bit. So let's try that one more. So what do we do? Let's click this up. We do one more mask. Let's go in here. Let's get tighter. Let's just, let's go right here. And let's do, let's do this one right here. Let's click the color. Click the paintbrush. And now we're just gonna add color to that point. And I like that. It's very nice. And hit the letter J and let's go over and do another one right over here. Choose the rain mask, go over here, and now let's add some color there. And so now we've added color in four different colors. We've added yellows, we've added the purple lupin, the green grass, and now the, the we have the magenta pink brush. So I'm really happy with the way we've been able to do some color separation. We've got some nice impact but without adding color globally, we've added just color separately. So this is something I'm very happy with and it's something that I always use when I'm doing uh, processing on foreground wildflowers. So as you can see down, there's a lot of options here, but there's another option. So I'm gonna open up another image here and I'm gonna show you here. So this one, yes, let's get out of here. All right, let's go to this one. This is from the Palouse in Eastern Washington. And I liked everything that was going on in terms of the light. And I wanted to find a way to accentuate it. So this time, instead of using the color, what we're gonna do, so let's, what we're gonna do is what's called luminance. So it's basically a luminosity mask. And we're gonna target the light colors in this situation. And so how do I do that? Well, we go up to our filter here. And that's our radial filter draw a circle around the area that we want. So here's the area I want, a J. I like that. And I can also turn my circle so that it's also on a diagonal. So now what I'm gonna do is I really like the colors going on here, but I wanna add more. So in this situation, let's add some more whites to it. And look at that punch. Now I only want it to be added. As you can see, everything in that circle right now has light. and what I want to do is only target the lightest parts and not hit the shadows. So if we go down here to range mask, instead of choosing color, we're going to choose luminance. And once we choose luminance, we're presented with what's called a slider from shadows to dark. Now we can visualize it so you can see that everything is happening. Everything that's red, that's where it's going to happen. All right. In this situation, I only want the light to apply to the lighter parts and not the darks. So I move the slider that's in the shadows all the way to the right. And now only the area that ha should have light has it. And this is a great way to add some nice color. You can also change the balance so we can add some warmth to it maybe. And this is a nice way to add some nice foreground color. And in this situation, we have another area of light that I really want to accentuate. So I click J and let's do another radio filter right here and I've done a circle around the area I want. And now what I'm gonna do is add some color. I'm gonna add some warmth to it maybe, and maybe I'm gonna add some whites as well, all right? And then I'm gonna go down to my range mask, choose luminance again, and then I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna draw the slider all the way over. So now the only thing getting that boost is that lighter part and not the shadows. And this is a great way to really accentuate the, the highlights in your image and really bring your subject into, into focus there. So I'm really happy with the color that's going on here and the attention. And another thing I like to use the radial filter for is to really what's called cloud sculpting. And what I do here is I draw a radial filter over the whole sky, all right? Could be any of the part that you want in this situation. And what I'm going to do is I want to accentuate and I want to really boost all the whites in that cloud. I really want to make them really punchy. Maybe even add a little bit of clarity right there. And then I'm going to go down to the range mask, do the same thing, luminance. 
and I'm going to slide it all the way so now only the light parts are getting a punch and the rest aren't. Then I'm going to go back and just do another radio filter by pressing J and this time I want to hit just the darks so I hit my blacks and now I'm going to go black and I'm going to make it really stormy here so everyone's really stormy and then I'm going to go down to my range mask click the luminance this time I'm going to do the opposite I'm going to drag the slider the other way and now so what we're going to do is so what we're really doing is we are finding the blacks and the blacks and what's called cloud sculpting and we're really bringing some nice definition to those clouds so this is an example of how I use the radio filter and the luminance together to really make things punch in the image and have that image and one other filter I might see here is let's do one more circle and I want to add some whites into this area so let's draw a circle let's go around here let's draw it all along here let's say let's go about right here let's go right about there now I'm just gonna add whites all the way there and I only want it to apply to the very brightest part of that image so there we go and there and then I can even do this and maybe even add a little bit of warmth just to get a try and now, so we're, now we're getting that speckled light which I absolutely love so again now if I if I go back and I've gone too far we can always go back and re-edit it you're not stuck with what you want and you can always change the whites or if it's too much or whatever you can also go back and you can also do this a little less you can add this and there's one other thing that I like it's called the smoothness if you want an abrupt change or you just want a smooth change you can use this as well and so if we check our luminance map we can see what's being affected and what's not so I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this little tip it's one of my favorite things again it is using the radio filter in conjunction with the range mask either using color or luminance. Thanks guys and we'll catch you on the flip side.